the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of Mass today. Welcome to those who are joining us from home as well. Today we would have been celebrating, had it not been the Sunday, the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, but let's not forget uh, the lessons of his life and the way in which he has left an example for us to look after our planet, to look after our creation and the environment in which we live. This is very much the theme of Pope Francis at the moment as well in this season of creation as he's called it. The responsibility we all have, uh, not only for the material things of our world, but for each other, because the most important resource of our planet is people, each other. As we begin our Mass then and prepare to hear God's Word and celebrate His presence in the Eucharist, we ask forgiveness for all our failings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We praise God now in the words of our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Against the Lord's vineyard, let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle, he built a tower. He dug a press there, too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on and knock down its wall for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. 
Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed, integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river, it stretched out its roots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. We shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving, and that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learnt from me and have been taught by me, and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel affirmation. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time came, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next, he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, they will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, 
It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce of fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The word is gospel now, since we are to A good teacher uses imagination as a tool for teaching, draws out the imagination of their students. And to draw out the imagination of the students, you need to have images, don't you? You need to put before them certain images, pictures, that they can relate to, that they can develop in their own minds. Jesus is the supreme teacher, and so often we see in the Gospels how he used imagery to um, carry out his teaching, to reinforce his message. The image of the vineyard is the content of our Gospel today. He uses imagery like the shepherd and the sheep, the wedding feast, and many other examples. But often, you know, we can have an image of something in our minds, but not realize what the image is trying to tell us. We can mistake the image for the lesson behind it. A geography teacher from the inner city was telling me that she takes her pupils out on field trips. And uh, when they go out, they're so excited because they're out of doors. They're in the countryside, which they're not used to. They're seeing sheep and trees and orchards and various things like that, which they don't see um, in their home environment. But when they come home, they're not always able to say what it all meant to them. They can say what they've seen, but they don't know what it all meant. They don't see, if you like, the beauty of God's creation behind what they see. And it's true for all of us. We don't always appreciate what we see. We don't always stop to think. Whose creation is it in which we live? Whose planet, whose world, whose universe is it in which we have our life and our being? And when Jesus uses the imagery of the vineyard and the tenants who look after the vineyard or fail to look after it, he's actually, of course, not talking about a vineyard, though we may retain that image in our minds. We know he's talking about us. He's talking about all of us, the tenants, the stewards of our creation, the stewards of the planet on which we live, the people appointed by him to care for our world. And are we being good tenants? Are we actually sometimes neglecting the things that he's given us, the beauty of his creation? Are we polluting the atmosphere are we wasting resources? Are we failing to share in an equal way uh, the gifts of our creation with those who have so little? When we come to examine our own conscience, we may say, yes, we haven't always been the best of tenants. We haven't always been those who look after the vineyard very well. And what are we going to hand on to successive generations? A flawed and a tarnished planet whose resources are drained and whose beauty is somehow spoilt. Hopefully not. Hopefully we will still have that sense of responsibility that the Lord enjoins on us to look after what we have, to care for the resources that we are so privileged to own. And really that's what our Lord is getting at, I think, in that parable of the vineyard and so many parables in the gospel. It's asking us to look behind what we see and recognize whose hand is there in the work of creation, whose hand it is that's guiding us, who leads us in everything we do, who gives us the breath we breathe, who alone can uh, give healing and peace and joy to our world. But we always have to look behind what we see behind the imagery to see the one who created these things for us.
when we go into the shops, when we go into school, when we go into our workplace, when we go into our family, into our home, we are responsible stewards, or we're called to be responsible stewards for all those places uh, in which we have a part to play. And so often we take it for granted, don't we? How we may waste water, how we may waste food, how we may neglect the needs of those around us, forget our neighbors. It's so easily done to become poor stewards of what we have. The gospel brings us back, reminds us all the time of our responsibility and our privilege to live in this world, to take care of it, and to share the resources and gifts that abound within it. Coming up on Friday is the family fast day or the harvest fast day that the Cafard arranges every year. This year, I know Cafard are concerned that they may not get the funding that they usually rely on. Like so many of the charities, people are naturally tightening their belts, perhaps not giving so much uh, to those charities and those needs around the world because we're more concerned perhaps about our own needs. All the more reason, I think, to think outside of ourselves and to use uh, the Family Fast Day next Friday as an opportunity to think more widely about the world in which we live and the people for whom we're responsible. To be good stewards of our resources by sharing generously what we have. And CAFOD make a special appeal this year for us to do that, to be more conscious than ever of the needs of others, even at a time when we're so conscious of our own situation. The pandemic uh, has uh, perhaps focused people's attention more on their own family, more on their own home, more on their own needs, and that's understandable. But that does not really uh, leave an excuse for not caring, looking wider at the needs of our brothers and sisters who are actually suffering so much more than we are. In the third world, many countries that CAFOD looks after or helps to serve, uh, there is dire need which we can't uh, even imagine. And so that call to be stewards not just of our own homes, but stewards of the whole of creation uh, leads us to be more missionary, more outgoing in, in our faith and to look after the needs, the material and spiritual needs of those who make up the whole family of our world. So there's an opportunity there for us, and I'd ask that uh, on Friday, if we can, deny ourselves some food and keep some money back uh, for the needs of others and bring that money back to church. It's quite an important gesture to bring the money back uh, rather than just send it, uh, if you like, um, directly. But because we do that as a church, we do that then as a family, as a parish, uh, pooling our resources as a parish and from this parish sending out uh, the donations and the gifts uh, to CAFOD uh, to aid them in their work. Let's take the opportunities that come our way to help other people, to care for the vineyard which is the world in which we live, so that it will bear fruit, so that we will bear fruit in our lives too, not stand still, not be static in our faith, but develop our faith to grow in, our, in goodness, to grow in generosity, and develop, develop that sense of sharing with each other. It's important to remember that CAFOD is not just about money, it's about development. And so many charities would say the same, helping other people to help themselves. But we need to give that, that primer, that um, seed funding, if you like, for many projects which can then be built on by the people themselves, in education, in medicine, in so many fields. So let's be good stewards of the vineyard, good stewards of creation, and reach out to those around us, near and far. We stand to profess our faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our Mass today, you were asked to uh, keep in our prayers the intentions of the Wright family, Molly Gallagher, Jacob Billington, Ray Birmingham, Michael Callahan, and George Foster. And now we place before the Father all our prayers and intentions. For the Church and her leaders, let them tend well the vineyard entrusted to them by the Lord and let it produce holy men and women for the kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in government and local councils, may we understand the difficult task that they have in trying to protect our entire nation from the COVID-19 virus. Let them never worry unduly, but commit all their energy to the work for justice and peace calling on the power of the Holy Spirit, who alone can bring success to the work of their hands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the young people of the world, in this time of pandemic, let them realize their responsibility to society and help them to ease their need for drink and socializing. Let their potential for a full Christian life be realized and let them find in the church the fulfillment of all their hopes and desires. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the protection of our planet and the care of the environment in this season of creation, may we all work together for the good of our common home in harmony with all its inhabitants. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a spirit of peace in the community, let us never take God's gifts for granted, but always count our blessings and praise the Lord for his goodness to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray with Mary, who was full of God's grace. Hail Mary. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, <coughs> pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make our private petitions in silence to the Lord of the vineyard. Father, with all those who are specially in our prayers today and all the petitions we've made to you, we ask you that you sow in us a fruitful seed of faith and bring to completion in love all that you have given to us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us now offer our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves to God our Father. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Eucharistic prayer is number two. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy, priests and deacons, all your faithful people. Remember our brothers and sisters, our loved ones and friends, whom we remember today and who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. So now, at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Body, Christ, bring us to everlasting life. invite those who are joining us from home to make a spiritual communion at this time. And as you can't be present here with us in church, present with us in spirit and close to Christ through a spiritual communion. Grant us, Almighty God, 
that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we are about to receive, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the blessing and communion, just one or two notices. I'd ask you uh, again just to bear in mind uh, the Capod Harvest Fast Day on Friday and any donations you'd like to make can be brought to church. Next week, uh, we're hoping to have some form of the annual quarantory that we traditionally have at this time of year. Though it won't be possible to do what we normally do, we will live stream the Mass at 10.30 as usual, and then have the Blessed Sacrament exposed for an hour on the altar, and that will also be live streamed so people can um, sharing that devotion at home. You are welcome to be in church for that time, but we'd ask you to commit to the hour, if you can, if you do come uh, in after Mass. And the same will apply on Monday next, after the 10 past 9 Mass, one hour of exposition, which we also live streamed. And on Tuesday evening, that's a week on Tuesday, of course, uh, 6.30 to 7.30, the Blessed Sacrament will be exposed live streaming until the Mass at 7.30. May I ask your prayers for uh, Eileen Craggs, whose funeral will be here on the 8th of October. For Michael Kirk, the funeral service at Thornton on the 13th of October. And for Stella Norman, uh, her funeral service will be on the 14th of October. Eternal rest give to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.